night and uh, today is, uh, is, is exciting. But before we do this, I just want to share something uh, with you that I was reminded as uh, as we were worshiping. Uh, Sophia and I watched a pretty cool interview, and, and I would encourage you to look at it. It's a country singer I've never heard of before, but I'm sure he's well known. Uh, uh, Johnny Rich. Uh, and he had an interview with uh, Tucker Carson. And I've never seen uh, a, a, a guy, you know, secular singer, not affiliated with church, preach the word of God like he did. I mean, he went into super deep stuff. Uh, the false doctrine of rapture. I mean, with Tucker Carson, millions, millions of you, how dangerous it was. You know, it was introduced in 1800. It was never talked about before. But that so many Christians believe that, <clears throat> you know, before all those tribulations, before the Antichrist come, they're going to be rapture. So the danger of this is that, you know, and it was really, the danger of this is that, uh, you know, people are not going to believe it's the Antichrist because they believe that they're going to be gone before it comes. So they're going to they're going to stop doing the things that the Antichrist required them to do because they believe that <clears throat> it cannot be the Antichrist because there, there should be rapture before that. <laughs> Man. Get that frog out. So, uh, very interesting, and it's like Tucker Carson was like, "Well, you know, I don't really trust men uh, about religious stuff, but if it's in the Bible, I want to, I want to, I want to hear it. I want to read." I mean, he was like super good, and then he said, he took a scripture that I like to to share with with us uh, this morning, Second um, Chronicles seven fourteen. And if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from the wicked way, then I will hear from heaven and I will forgive their sin and heal their land. And he was really said, this is not a scripture for the wicked people in the world. This is the, peop the scripture for the people that you know are called by God's name. And as Christian, wow. we got Christ's name and we, we're called Christian. And he was like going going at it and then I, as I was thinking of it I looked at it and I'm like uh, you know but wicked is like God is saying that we, we turn from our wicked way but it's like you know I used to be wicked but I'm, I'm really you know not really wicked anymore but then if you look at the at the definition of wicked in the in the dictionary uh, intended to or capable of arming someone of something. Uh, maybe we're not doing the thing to intend to arm somebody, but I, you know, trust me, there's still inside of me a lot of stuff that are capable of hurting people. Uh, <clears throat> we, as a, as a church, we as Christian, we as people that, you know, uh, call God our God, we have to, we, we're the one that have to turn around. We're the one that have to, you know, humble and, and say we're sorry, Lord, uh, um, because for all of this, God will turn around the whole situation if God's people doing it, and then the weekend in the world will come to know God, and then they will turn hopefully from their way. But we are the one that need to ask God to forgive, you know, for all the things. Um, it, it something is, is, is probably happening, but this land needs to be healed. <clears throat> it was a land chosen by God, built on the foundation of God, and there is not much of God left in, in it, but there is enough Christian to make this whole situation be turned around. And we're not talking about political things. We're talking about Christians in church asking God to heal them, and God will make the things happen and will will we'll <clears throat> make the situation and the circumstances so that uh, it can be healed. Amen? Amen. Yes. Yes. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Pastors, it's always an honor and a privilege to be able to bring the message. Thank you for sharing your pulpit. Thank you. So today we have a special message that we're going to be bringing to you. 
Um, as you know, we've been going through and uh, training different people and getting them into position and giving them, I'm sorry, need to talk louder. Yes. yes. Okay. Need to remember that. <laughs> if y'all can't hear in the back, just do your ear like this and I'll get it. Okay. Because the mic is here, that's why I thought. So we're going to be um, <clears throat> tag teaming a message. Uh, we did this once before with Polly last month, and then I'll be doing this until um, November that I know of, but we might have another one in December that we'll do this with, but I won't uh, say her name yet. Um, so we want to remind everybody that we have services here at the Hampton Inn Hotel. We're located where Cheddar's and um, Golden Corral is at, because there's different Hampton Inns. Uh, we're here Sunday mornings at 10 o'clock, again for Tuesday Bible study at 7 o'clock, and then we have our uh, Women 31, which is a woman's group. It empowers women, helps to encourage. Uh, it's a time of fellowship, getting together. Um, that's the third Friday of every month at 7 o'clock. Then we also have the full gospel men and women business meeting, and that is for people that uh, have had businesses that want to come and receive a word of encouragement for uh, business purposes. And that will be uh, the fourth Thursday of every month at 7 o'clock. So today I would like to um, introduce my sister Reese. Reese has been with us, um, I guess, about a year, right? Or a little bit more than a year? 15, yeah, 15 months. Yeah. Something like that. Well, she knows. 15 months. How about that? Yeah. <laughs> it's been an honor and a privilege uh, to be able to work with her, uh, to get to know her, to do ministry with her. And um, so we're going to go ahead and open in prayer, and then she's going to start off the message. So, Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you, Father, for the message. We thank you for all that you're doing here. Yes. Lord, we just open our hearts to you. We say, have your way, Holy Spirit. Our hearts are open and receptive to receive what it is that you want. Thank you, Father, for peace of heart, peace of mind. And thank you for the transformations that have already begun. It's your word that brings the transformation, Lord. So I thank you that you anoint our lips to speak what it is that you want us to speak. Yes, we have something prepared, but if you decide at any moment to scrap that and you just want to use our mouthpieces, then so be it, Lord. You have your way. Do what you want to do, Lord. We love you. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. And everyone says? Amen. 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 So I want to ask everyone to close their eyes for a moment, if you don't mind. I um, just want to paint a picture for you um, real quickly um, of a situation that maybe you've experienced uh, in some type of way. So you've worked all day long in the heat possibly. You're exhausted. You're not just hungry, but you're hangry. And um, that's probably not a good thing. And so you decide that you're gonna go to the closest fast food place to uh, order yourself something to eat. So you pull into Dairy Queen, and all you can think about is a, uh, a Dairy Queen, uh, a dude with uh, exercise fries and uh, a Butterfinger Blizzard to go with that. And as you pull in, you see that there are about six or seven cars in front of you. And you know that it's going to be a wait. And uh, you need to eat right then. Your stomach is begging you for food. And so my question is, if you can imagine yourself in that situation, how are you going to react? How is your disposition going to be? Are you going to scream in your car and be frustrated and just angry and when you get to the window be uh, super ugly to the person and uh, tell them, how disappointed you are that you hated that wait, you know, that long to get through the line to get your food. Um, 
Our message today is called The Waiting Season. And we are all familiar with the natural seasons of winter, summer, spring, and fall. But just like the seasons of nature, we have spiritual seasons that are unpredictable. We all go through seasons, but we don't go through the same seasons at the same time. One person may be in a harvest season where you see them being blessed by anything and everything, promotion, all the things that you want um, for yourself, but you may be in another season. You could be in a dry season, um, a hard season, a season we might refer to as a winter season. Um, we might not understand how the Lord is working in us during these seasons, but what we can be sure of is when we jump out ahead of him, we may experience consequences and delays. How we wait matters. The title of this message is The Waiting Season. How do we wait in our waiting season? In the Bible, we all know the story of Abraham and Sarah. God promised Abraham that he would be the father of many nations and that Abraham would in fact have a biological son of his own through Sarah. We know that both Abraham and Sarah were well up in years. When Sarah heard, that Lord, heard the Lord speak this promise to Abraham, she laughed. In the natural, she didn't seem how this could ever be possible. Sarah was believed to be around 65 at the time that she heard that promise. It would not be until she was 90 years old that she was to give birth to Isaac. That's a long time. That's like 25 years of waiting. Imagine how Sarah must have felt during those 25 years of waiting, year after year hoping, is this gonna be the year? Is this gonna be the time? And praying that against all odds, against all natural possibilities that this could happen. Questioning God's word, wondering if he had changed his mind. Had he forgotten about the promise? I believe that Sarah felt that she could not wait any longer for the Lord. I think she had deferred hope because she had just waited and waited and waited. She decided to take matters into her own hands and make something happen that seemed logical that would give Abraham the heir that he desired. So Sarah sent Abraham to sleep with his mid, mate, her maidservant, Hagar, and she became pregnant. How hard it must have been for Sarah to not only give her husband to another woman, for that, but for that woman to give her a son that she was never able to give uh, him in the natural. Sarah became angry and bitter with Hagar and treated her harshly. Hagar despised serving Sarah because after all, she was carrying Abraham's child. Finally, it was all too much and Sarah told Abraham to send Hagar and Ishmael out into the desert. When I thought about this, it must have been a difficult time how much Abraham must have felt, what he must have felt like sending Ishmael and the mother of his only son um, at that time away uh, with few rations. And, and Hagar, she didn't have a plan B. Um, I am confident that Abraham loved his son dearly. And I imagine that it broke his heart to say goodbye to his son at that time and not know where he was going to end up. I wonder how this affected Abraham's relationship with Sarah at that moment. I would imagine that there might have been a lot of hard feelings and, uh, you know, conflicting things going on. When we decide to take control of the season that we find ourselves in without seeking the Lord, we may set ourselves up for consequences that not only affect us but also affect the lives of others because we do not understand the season that we are in. We may find ourselves in a season that has been long and harsh 
Lord, I have been waiting and waiting. Where are you? Just like Sarah. Why are you not answering me? Do you even care what I'm going through? What is our attitude like when we are experiencing a long winter season? Are we like Sarah trying to control our circumstances? Are we doing everything we can to move as quickly and as, pos as possible to stop the discomfort, our broken heart, to mend an impossible broken relationship, maybe with a child in our own strength, because it hurts too much to be in that season? How are we racing to get into the next season? And if so, what happens if we do not learn the lessons in the season that we find ourselves in. We can literally delay our next season for, season for years by how we wait. Just ask the Israelites. They were 40 years in the desert. They also leaned into their own understanding. They were, as the Lord would say, stiff-necked. They complained. They had bad attitudes. They worshiped other gods. They blamed others. They felt like they were victims. They were ungrateful. They looked back and wished that they were back in Egypt, where they came from. They kept forgetting again and again the faithfulness of God. He was their pillar of cloud by day and their pillar of fire by night. But yet they continued to do what they did. When we complain in our waiting season, we remain in a waiting season. Do we recognize in our own lives patterns that, we have, come, that have come around again and again? What would happen in a hard season if we were to ask our Father in heaven this question, what are you wanting me to learn in this season? The waiting season is an invitation. It can be a place of great growth in the presence of the Lord, where if we allow him to equip us for the next season to come, he will do just that. When we submit ourselves to him and allow him to sift us in his refining fire, he will begin to smooth out our rough edges. He teaches us to trust him deeper in all circumstances. He holds and heals us when we are broken. He teaches us how to rely on him when everyone else may have abandoned us and we feel alone. He is our steadfast anchor in the storm. It is in the valley, it is in the desert, in the hard, difficult seasons that he is reminding us in Psalms 46.10, be still and know that I am God. We need to learn how to submit our season to him, wait on his perfect timing, and believe that he knows better than we do about what is good and right for our lives. While we are in a harsh season, it may not make any sense to us it may feel as if nothing is going our way, but the Lord is changing our perspectives and he's shaping us to look more like Christ. During the waiting season, there are many things that we can do while we wait. Living with a heart of gratitude and thankfulness to the Lord for our blessings is a wonderful start. And we really do have so many things to be thankful for, even when we're going through hard times. I, I was thinking about that this morning, and and sometimes we, we have to look for those things, like look for the laughter that we can find during the day. Just just all of the, the things. He woke us up that morning, you know. Um, we can walk and talk. A, a, a lot of people don't have those privileges. Um, there's just so much that we can uh, 
be be thankful for and grateful for during that season. Uh, it doesn't have to be a, a season of just uh, nothing but feeling crushed. Uh, we have to find the beauty in that season. And uh, another thing that that um, I thought about is um, to praise and worship. Um, it fuels us. It gives us hope and trust that the spring season will arrive. And, uh, you know, he's brought all of us out of another place into another season, from a winter season to a spring season, into harvest season, just all the different seasons, but he never leaves us where we're at. <clears throat> but we can stay a little longer if we try to do things, you know, on our own, because, you know, as humans, we, we have control issues <laughs> sometimes, and we don't always rely um, on the Lord as we should. Yeah. So um, I think that also we need to um, just hold on to the belief that God is working even when it feels like nothing is happening, that you're hitting walls, you're trying this, you're trying that, and uh, it just feels like you're stuck. But he's actually working things out. He goes ahead of us, right? And um, he's for us, and he wants everything good for us. And sometimes he's, he's waiting on us, and sometimes he's waiting on others. Uh, he, he's just waiting to get everything together in his perfect timing, though it doesn't always seem to be our perfect timing. It's not in a timing that, you know, we may feel like we're just waiting forever and ever, but he does have a perfect plan for us. So um, be present with God in the journey. Uh, enjoy the, the, um, the things that he wants to, to teach us if we're struggling in a harsh time. Um, I think the key is submitting it all to him and admitting that I don't have control, but I, get, I choose to give the control to, to you, Lord. You take this situation that I'm dealing with. Uh, maybe there's broken, brokenness in myself that needs to be healed before I before you allow me to walk into another relationship with a person because you, you, you love us so much as a good father, you don't want to send us into something where we're broken. You know, he wants to fix us, heal us. And, um, and so uh, reading his word is, is another thing that, that is so wonderful and encouraging us. And sometimes it's so hard, I, I'll just speak for me, um, I will walk by my Bible. I have it right there where I can see it, and I'll be distracted by this and that and the other. Uh, but when I finally get my face in it, I, I'm just excited, and I'm like, wow, this is good. You know, why didn't I read this days ago or weeks ago? You know, it encourages me. It, it, uh, it lifts me up, and, and I'm able to uh, stand on the words that the Lord has spoken to me. Um, in my in the situation that I find myself in so um, if we are in one season and all of our hope is in the next season then we will not get the strength of the season that we're in right now so it's very important to learn what he is teaching us right where we're at this means that we will repeat what we did not learn in the previous season again the right thing in the wrong season becomes the wrong thing in the wrong and the wrong thing in the right season is definitely the wrong thing how do you wait in your waiting season I started this message with this question how you wait is of great importance none of us like to wait we don't but the Lord gave us a scripture in Isaiah 60, 22 that says, I am the Lord, and when it is time, I will make things happen. Another scripture in Micah 7, 7 says, I trust the Lord to save me, and I will wait for him to answer my prayer. Trust the Lord in your waiting season. Ecclesiastes 
3.11 says, God has made everything beautiful for its own time. I'm going to hand it over to my sister, Melissa, now. Hasn't she done such a great job? Yes. 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 This is the very first time that she is stepping into what God has called her to do. Amen. She is being obedient. Amen. <clears throat> so I am very proud of her. Okay. And I know that the Father is very proud of her very as good. well. Yes. And I thank y'all for your grace. I thank you yes. that y'all <laughs> make this a place where all of us can grow together. Our pastors yes. grow with us, <clears throat> and they give us the room to grow. They yes. give us the freedom to grow. If I was any other place, they wouldn't allow this type of growth right here. They would see it as foolish. They would see it as, um, no, you get up there, you do it yourself. But I thank the Lord for the pastors that we have because they trust the Holy Spirit. Yes. And that gives us the freedom to grow. I'm growing through this as well because she put the majority of this message together. Just like Polly put it together. The Lord didn't give me the title of this. He didn't give me, and I'm used to having it all myself. Being confident knowing it's coming directly from him, right from the source. But I'm growing in this because this is something new that i got to trust him. So it's not just um, her that's going through something new. He gives me the idea of how to do something, and then as I'm implementing it and being obedient and walking it out, now I'm growing and learning as well. I think it's just amazing. It's always twofold what God does. Amen. It's never just what we see. It's what we see to get our attention, but there's more to that, right? Yes. So it's interesting. Um, uh, as I was studying for this message, the word wait, I looked it up. Well, you can say, that's common sense. Okay, well, here's common sense, and the Lord's speaking through the definition of everything that's been spoken in the message already. So this is a definition according to Webster for the word wait, okay? It says to stay in place in expectation of. Expectation, you're gonna hear this word all throughout. To remain stationary in readiness or expectation. To look forward expectantly. To hold back expectantly. To be ready and available. A state or attitude of watchfulness and expectancy. The synonym of wait, one of them is bide, B-I-D-E. It means to withstand, to tolerate, to continue in a state or condition. Tarry, tarry means to wait a while, to continue in a place. Sojourn, sojourn means to stay temporarily. Temporarily, so it means that the season of waiting will eventually come to an end. But how is it gonna end? What we do affects the ending of how that is, right? So I looked up the word bide because I've heard of another word similar to that, but I didn't hear the word bide, B-I-D-E. The synonym of bide is abide. Last remain, endure, and persist. So here is the word of God with everything that has been spoken so far, with all the definitions that are still fresh, with all the synonyms that are still fresh. Psalms 27, 14. Wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Be strong and let your heart take courage. Yes, wait for and confidently expect the Lord. Isaiah 40, 31. But those who wait for the Lord, who expect, look for, and hope in him will gain new strength and renew their power. They will lift up their wings and rise up close to God like eagles, rising toward the sun. They will run and not become weary. They will walk and not grow tired. We can take this scripture alone and we can apply this over ourselves. Learning to wield the sword is what we have to do with God's word. It's not enough to just read it. We have to amalgamate with it. We have to become one with it. We have to wave it over ourselves. 
We have to use the sword to cut through situations, through thoughts, through things, right? So this scripture right here, Isaiah 40, 31, that I just read to you, I would personalize it and I would say, I wait for the Lord. I expect, I am looking for, I am hoping in him. My hope is in you. I am gaining new strength and you are renewing your power through me. I am lifting up my wings and rising up close to you, God. Just like the eagle, I'm rising toward the sun. I am running with you and I am not becoming weary. And at that point, if I have to bind weariness and break it off of myself, if I have to bind tiredness, if I have to bind anything that, that I feel, because as I start to speak the word over me, the word starts to cut because that's what it is, it's a double-edged sword. And it starts to cut, it penetrates, right? And it cuts away things that need to be cut. And because it's double-edged, it cuts going in and it cuts coming out, right? And so that's what I'm doing, I'm using the Word of God to cut away things while I'm in the waiting season. And before you know it, you take your focus off of the struggle in the waiting season and you start to feel that energy you start to feel the joy you start to feel the life flowing through you because God's Word brings the life in us it stirs it up the waters the living waters they get stirred up within us when we read the Word of God over ourselves right last says they will walk and not grow tired Lord I'm walking with you and I am NOT feeling tired and sometimes you have to tell your body no you're fine you got six hours of sleep, you shape up, you're fine, you're good. I do this all the time. I drive a lot, I travel all over the place. And many times I have to tell myself, I'm not tired, I'm good, I'm fine. If someone speaks something to me that uh, hurts my heart, I tell my heart, you're fine, you're fine, I'm good. I will not allow those words to penetrate my heart. I will not allow those words to take root in my body. I will give no foothold to the devil. And it might seem sound silly, but it's not because words have power. So do thoughts and so do intentions. So other people's intentions, if we receive it, then we're allowing the enemy, the foothold, to cut things in us that it doesn't need to be, to plant things in us that it doesn't need to be. Lamentations 3.25. The Lord is good to those who wait confidently for him. To those who seek him on the authority of God's word. Look at that. God's word. Isaiah 30, 18. Therefore the Lord waits expectantly and longs to be gracious to you. And therefore he waits on high to have compassion on you. <clears throat> For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed, happy, fortunate are all those who long for him, since he will never fail them. That's something I hold on to and I say, you will never fail me. People may fail me, but you will never fail me. And when we think about it, and we think about from the time we started walking with him up to the point that you are now, he's never let you down. He's never failed you. He's never abandoned you. He's never turned his back on you, right? And those are the things that we count as our blessings. Those are the things that we encourage ourselves with, right? Yes. Psalms 33, 20 through 22. We wait expectantly. There's that word again. You know, you can't make this stuff up. This is the Lord. This is so cool how when you start to study and then he keeps on reinforcing and reaffirming what it is, right? So Psalms 33, 20 through 22, we wait expectantly for the Lord. He is our help and our shield for in him our heart rejoices because we trust, lean on, rely on, and are confident in his holy name. Let your steadfast loving kindness, O Lord, be upon us in proportion as we have hoped in you. Psalms 135, I wait patiently for the Lord. My soul expectantly waits, and in his word do I hope. 
John 15, 4 through 9, remain in me. Remain was a synonym, remember, for wait, bide, right? So wait for me, wait in me, remain in me, and I will remain in you. Just as no branch can bear fruit by itself without remaining in the vine, neither can you bear fruit producing evidence of your faith unless you remain in me, waiting in him, right? I am the vine, you are the branches. The one who remains in me and I in him bears much fruit. The one who waits for him. For otherwise, apart from me, that is cut off from vital union with me, you can do nothing. If anyone does not remain in me, wait for him. He is thrown out like a broken branch and withers and dies. And they gather such branches and throw them into the fire and they are burned. If you remain in me and my words remain in you, that is, if we are vitally united and my message lives in your heart, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified and honored by this. When you bear much fruit and prove yourselves to be my true disciples, I have loved you just as the Father has loved me. Remain in my love, wait in my love, and do not doubt my love for you. So it's easy for us to hear this, but then we can think about, well, it's, it's easier said than done, right? And usually when we're going through the waiting season, we tend to lean to our own understanding instead of leaning on him, right? So I had a waiting season where I was at a job where the Holy Spirit was going to train me personally and teach me and there was going to be many many circumstances many things I was not going to agree with my finances were going to be cut I wouldn't be paid first it started out with like just ten dollars I didn't say anything I don't like confrontation and I thought you know what it, it's just ten dollars it's okay but then it increased to 20 to 50 to 300 to 400 and I finally had to say something. Do you see how it kept getting worse? Because I didn't do what I was supposed to do, right? I finally went to someone and I said, uh, this person knew accounting because I thought maybe it's just me. Maybe I just don't know how to do the math and maybe I'm missing, you know, messing something up here. And I wanna make sure before I confront anybody that I'm correct in what I'm saying. I don't like to bring division. I don't like um, bringing any kind of anything that's going to disrupt peace right and so had I not gone through the different things in this job uh, it's one thing to say God I trust you and and God uh, I'll do anything you want me to and then he puts you through these different things that you have yeah. to go through but instead of staying in that season four years that's a long time not as long as what Sarah had to go through 25 years and deciding to take matters into her own hands and just say, well, go sleep with my servant and you know, maybe you'll get what you want, right? And we can judge her and we can say, well, she didn't wait. Would we wait? What do we do now, right? There's no, we, we can't pass judgment on anybody because of things we've done ourselves, circumstances and situations, and, and, and we shouldn't even try to compare. Oh, well, I didn't do that. I just did this because in God's eyes, he sees sin all the same, right? So I went through four years of growing with the Lord, trusting him. I had to withstand. I had to tolerate. I had to continue in the condition that I was in. It didn't get better, but I had to get better at it. I had to have joy. I was ministering to people and others can say, well, no, I wouldn't put up with that. Oh, no. But you know what? The beauty of it is that at the end of those four years, the Lord opened another door, and there was a transition that was made so smoothly. And now, because of everything that, that, that you endure, you reap the blessings of it. You reap a harvest of it. 
And so now I'm with another job and I'm running with the Lord. It's, it's incredible. There's just things that, that have happened that there's no other way had it not been for him. Um, in a ministry situation, when we do ministry, a lot of times we get hurt. But what do we do? Do we continue to trust God? He's placed us in these ministry situations because he wants to grow us. He wants to form our character. He wants to um, shape us in that season that we're going through. But many times we run away from anything that's uncomfortable. But then there are other situations we'll stay in and we'll endure for the love, for the money, right? But when God's doing something with us, we'll quickly say, oh no, that's not for me. Mm -mm. Oh no, God won't do that. Oh yes, he will. Go through all the different things in the Bible that, that the prophets went through, that his people went through, and see the purpose behind it, see the growth, and see how all their stories compiled together, important enough to teach us in the Bible, right? How does our stories compare to that? What is it that we're doing in the waiting season? Waiting in line. Oh, it's gonna take forever. <laughs> Actually, that's a time to reflect. I never have time. I never have time for God. I, I'm always so busy. Well, you come across times when you're waiting in your car. What are we doing in our car? Right? When we're in traffic, instead of complaining about traffic, put on worship music. Start worshiping the Lord. But also, you know what? When there's things in, in, in traffic, you can take control of that situation too. I had, I had a situation um, about three weeks ago. I was on the phone with somebody and um, all of a sudden traffic is starting to come to a standstill. There's somebody that just pulls up on me and tailgates me and like revving their engine and then they shifted over to another lane and started tailgating someone else and I told the person I was on the phone with I said hold on real quick. And so I started saying black truck. I bind you right now in the name of Jesus. You will not be tailgating anybody. You will not be aggressive. You will settle yourself down right now in the name of Jesus. And before you knew it, that truck, it didn't hear me. It was aggressive behind me. It was impatient. It jumped over to someone else and started being aggressive there as well. But then all of a sudden, like if nothing happened, Words have power. Yes. We are the manifested sons and daughters of our Lord. Amen. We are seated in heavenly places with him. We're told to occupy and subdue this earth. We stop at the word occupy. That's, that's all we do, we just occupy it. No, subdue. Take your rightful place, Amen. right? So there's so many things we can learn in the waiting season. It is a time of growth. It is a time of pruning. It is a time of stretching and testing. Amen. It's a time of shaping our character. Part of our character is our mental, our mental part. That's the part where the battle's at, right? We're made up of a body, soul, and spirit. Our soul is emotions, right mind and will so the mind is where we have the mental issues and that's where we battle everything that the Lord is telling us to do so he shapes our character during that time we are to lean on him as the scripture said to trust him right so how we wait is vitally important and through it all we have to learn how to Trust him and depend on him. Is there anything else you would like to add? Amen. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that ends our message. Thank you. Great, great and exciting. It's, <clears throat> it's so exciting for us to see 
uh, you know, you coming and we, we, we want to encourage everybody uh, to, you know, to step up and, and, and prepare a message and, and share it. Like Melissa was saying, we trust the Holy Spirit to, to be in charge. Uh, we're going we're gonna, to, you know, encourage you, but we're not going to push you to do it because it's between you and the Lord. And, you know, here on earth we have seasons that are three months. So it's real organized. It's real predictable. Um, but your season and my seasons are not the same. In the eyes of God, it's a different thing. I don't know how long you need to, to wait. Um, and in the Bible, there is an example of this. Um, Saul was a guy that had a mission, kill as many Christians as he can. <laughs> you know, he was doing it for God. But, uh, and then God, sh Jesus showed up, actually, knocked him down his horse and said, this is what you used to do, this is what you're going to do. <clears throat> and I'm not a scholar because I don't really care about those kind of details, but it took about three years for him from the time he fell from his horse to the start of his ministry. For whatever reason, his season took three years to get rid of a whole religious spirit or hang, whatever it took. Um, and then you have another example, uh, <clears throat> a guy out of his mind, crazy, I mean, like you've never seen crazy. Dozens of people were coming to try to grab him and chain him up because he lived in a cemetery and nobody could even go and, and, and visit their relative in his cemetery because he was like taking over the whole thing. Totally crazy. Got a touch from Jesus, <clears throat> totally set free. I mean, when you're set free like this, it's like, like Mal was saying, he said, thank you is, is not enough. And he said, I want to dedicate my life. I want to follow you. I want to learn from you. I want to teach. You know, you teach me everything. Um, because we also, you know, in, in our world here, we like, uh, okay, you get saved. You <clears throat> attend church. You go to Bible studies. Uh, if you need to, you can even go to seminaries or Bible school. And then you're going to be ready to be sent. But the seasons is, is personal between you and God. This guy that was totally out of his mind, now is in right mind. He wants to learn from Jesus. He wants to become, you know, the best that he can be in, in Jesus. And Jesus turned around and said, no. He said, you take off and you go to the village and you start preaching the gospel. The day after. Saul take three years and this guy the day after is already sent by Jesus. Nobody except you and your relationship with Jesus know when the time is right. Everybody right. Has, has a season time. And, and the church is not there to try to organize everybody's seasons. The church is here to make you realize that in during this season of waiting, there is things that you need to do. There is, you, you need to keep you know, in, in, in touch and track with Jesus. And he will tell you exactly when, when, the, time, when the time is ready. Amen? So thank you for this word. It was, uh, it was excellent. Uh, I, I just love it. It it was so good for me, as a pastor, to like see, to see uh, the the people growing and and getting ready. And you know, uh, <clears throat> this this was good. This tick tag team kind of things. Same thing. If you you know if you think that okay, <coughs> now it's time for me to take a message. And I I know because I've never been train as a pastor or did any type of training and the first time you speak in front of people is like you know and, and you're getting used to it and after it becomes ingram part of you but if if you feel that you know it's time for you even if it's a 15 20 minute message it doesn't make a difference uh, we'll 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 leave you the time to 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 get into the into the process of it and because we trust the holy spirit we'll we'll know you know what? What when when the time is right? Um, I, if the Holy Spirit was to tell me somebody gets saved and we don't know him, but the whole, the Spirit of God is upon him and he wants to share, I would I would let him do it. Uh, because you know this is this is same thing. We we don't know uh, what is the the season the season you are in. But what we want to do is pray for you. Uh, because some seasons are, are, are not fun. Uh, I mean, here we get two seasons, so we, 
they, they, told, they told us, you, you move to Texas, there's only two seasons, hot and very hot. <laughs> and, it's, and it's about it. But, but you know, there are some seasons that are, that are not fun. Uh, we live in Connecticut. Winter is like, snow is fun for a, for a week, and then after it's really not, not really fun. And everybody is really waiting and expecting the spring. But it would not be any spring if there was no winter. I mean, the roots and all the whatever uh, ecological system is, during the winter something happened that it can start uh, growing up uh, you know, in, in the spring. So seasons are not always fun, but they're part of what God wants you to go through. So we want to pray for you this morning that uh, through whatever season you are in, uh, the Lord will do whatever it takes to do it. And then you will also realize that it is your season. Uh, <clears throat> you know, you don't plant stuff in, in, in certain season. You have to wait uh, for certain season. And also realizing that, you know, you cannot wait too long because if you plant it when it's not the season, it's not going to grow and it's going to whatever do the thing. So, Father, I praise you and I thank you, Father, for this wonderful word that you give us this morning. I praise you and I thank you, Father, that as we all here heard this word and the people watching have heard the word, I pray, Father, that you will come and speak to us. You will open our spiritual ears and our spiritual eyes that we may hear and see what, you, what you're doing in our life. Father, I pray for everyone, Father, and I said in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the season that we are in, Father. Yes. But I also need, Lord, that in this season that we are in, I need to hear from you. I need to hear, Father, that is this the season that, that what, what do I need to do in this season? Yes. Uh, what do what you want me to, to, to achieve to get ready for the next season, Father? So I praise you and I thank you, Father, that as we heard this word, Father, uh, you've already speak, spoken to us, Father, that the Holy Spirit may come and just bless, Father, everyone, Father, about this word, Father, that you will, Father, um, we're, not, we're not asking you to make the season shorter or, or longer. We thank you and we praise you that you have everything under control. And I praise you and I thank you that during the time we are here, Father, we are going to do the things that you want us to do, Father. So I praise you, I thank you, and I worship you. May you be blessed in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Hallelujah.